Alrighty folks, after years of shooting on gimbals and creating a ton of videos here on YouTube, there's always one thing that has bothered me and that is swapping out lenses in between takes. It's annoying, we need to power down the gimbal, lock it, swap out the lens, rebalance it, and then lastly, auto-tune the gimbal before we can continue the shoot. And after testing multiple gimbal setups with different lens combinations, I've come to realize that the way to go is prime lenses. I've spoken to many others who have the same problem, and this is why 90% of all creators often choose a zoom lens on their gimbal so they don't have to swap out the lens in between takes. But the problem with the zoom lens is that if the zoom aren't internal, you still have to go through the rebalancing process because if you don't, the gimbal motors will have to compensate for that added weight and this can lead to jittery or shaky footage. So how do we solve this problem so we don't have to rebalance the gimbal ever again? In this video, I'll show you the three ultra compact lenses that I use for most of my work and why you should consider using primes instead of shooting on a zoom lens when you're using a gimbal because this makes swapping out lenses easier than ever before. But if you aren't ready to make the switch and give up on your zoom lenses, there's a little trick you can use when balancing the gimbal that might help you to some extent. But first, let's talk prime lenses. Let's talk lenses because I've found that three prime lenses is all I need. And the lenses that I use is an 18 millimeter, a 35, and then an 85 millimeter. And this range of lenses is the perfect combo because it will cover most YouTubers and creators needs. 18 millimeter lens is my go-to lens. It lives on my camera and it's great for wide shots if I want to show off a location or simply follow a shot where I want to follow someone or something. But it also serves as my vlogging lens because it has the perfect field of view. 35 is really good for shots like this where I want to follow someone while he's doing activity and we can really see what he's doing without showing the full width of the location. But I've also found this lens to be really, really good when shooting car interior. And then we got the 85 millimeter, which is perfect for all these close-up shots or detail shots, but I also use it when I'm shooting from a distance. The good thing about these three lenses right here is that they're all the same size, they weight the same, and then I have an aperture of f1.8, so they're really, really great in low light. And then they have a nice shallow depth of field and they add a lot of benefits when I'm using these ones on the gimbal. The size of these lenses make the gimbal setup much lighter so they won't destroy my body when I'm shooting for a long time. The next thing is that these lenses are a breeze to swap out because I don't have to think about rebalancing the gimbal. So let me show you how we switch from the 18 to let's say the 35 millimeter. So what I do is that we power down the gimbal, I take the camera off, there we go. I take the lens, I find the little red spot right here. I put the camera up against my body, have the red dot pointing straight up. I release the lens, take the hood off, and then we switch lenses like this, put the hood back on, put the lens away, on with the uh, camera, and you're ready to shoot. I don't know how many seconds that was, but it was really, really fast. And thirdly, the good thing about these lenses here is that they're not as expensive as a really, really good zoom lens. For example, the 24 to 70 f 2.8 we're shooting on right here is a $2,000 lens. These three lenses right here are altogether 2,200 bucks, depending on when you buy them. So they're only a couple of hundred bucks more buying these three than buying one good zoom lens. And if that isn't enough, having three lenses give you more to choose from. And if one lens should fail, you still got two lenses to rely on. And as I said earlier, the prime lenses are smaller, they're lighter, which means they don't take as much space up in my camera bag. I can keep up coming with the things that will benefit you from shooting on primes. But hear me out, this one here is really important because by only sticking to a couple of prime lenses is that you will be more intent with what focal length you choose to shoot on. It shows that you have put thought into the filmmaking process and intentionally choosing a specific lens for that specific shot. 
Compare that to having a zoom lens where we just tend to zoom in and out and find a spot that looks great. The good thing is that if anyone were ever to question your choice of focal length, you don't end up looking stupid not knowing why you actually chose it. So be intentional when you shoot. How do you figure out what lenses you should buy? If you're new to filmmaking and you're just starting out, I recommend that you really think about what it is that you want to film because it can be really hard to figure out what lenses is the right fit if you don't know what it is that you're going to shoot. Let's say you want to shoot real estate like I did in the beginning. You could be well off with only two lenses, a 14 or a 16 millimeter wide angle lens to show off the property and then use a 85 millimeter for all the detail shots. Or if you want to shoot events, something like a 24 millimeter will be a great option because it's wide enough to capture most of the activities and then an 85 millimeter for the B-roll shots and if you want to add some distance. But again, it all comes down to what you prefer and the only way to figure that out is by trial and error. And it can take some time to figure out, but don't worry, it's part of the process and we've all been there. In my early days, I shot everything on a 16 to 35 because that was what I could afford at that time. But we grow and we learn and I found my style and what I prefer. And with time, you will also find the lenses that fits you. But if you're a complete beginner and you got no clue at all and you just want to get started, I recommend that you go out and get a cheap kit lens because then you don't end up wasting a lot of money on the wrong lenses. I have found that these three lenses here is the perfect combination and it covers most of my needs. Let's go back to what I said in the start. If you're still using a zoom lens, there's a little trick when you're using the gimbal. So you don't have to rebalance the gimbal each and every time. So let me show you how I do that. I just took the DJI 3 with a Zoom lens on, it's a 24 to 105. You can see when I zoom out, it goes all the way out and it's really out of balance, this one. So what I prefer, what I would do if I wanted to use this lens the whole day, I wanted to zoom in and out without having to rebalance. So I would power down the gimbal or put it to sleep so we can work with it. Then I would say, okay, Around 50 millimeters is about in the middle. You can see 70, about somewhere between 70 and 50 is kind of where I want it. Then I would balance it there. We open up, you can see it falls forward. So we'll pull it back to the stays. There we go. That's good. We can power it back on. And what we're gonna look at now is this little green box right here, which states if we have good balance. So let's say we want to zoom back into 24 millimeters. You can see it's still green. And if I zoom all the way out to 105, it's yellow. So still doable, but you might have some, uh, some pro trouble with the motors overworking a little bit. But let's say we just just take it back to, to 85 and we are still in the green. So you can work between 24 and 85 millimeters without rebalancing this gimbal. So. That's the trick and that's how you overcome rebalancing the gimbal at all times. But if you wanna be 100% sure that you won't get any micro jitters, just rebalance it. 